I can see Marty Devlin um, hanging out in the Auckland studio there. He's going to join me for a quick, because this is self-indulgent for me. I want to, I like chatting to Marty about about sports and whatnot. Is he there? Can you hear me, Marty, mate? Yeah, of course I can, mate. I got, I got you here, I got you loud and clear. I got you here, I got you here. I mean, ben Rama, Ben Zama, Ben Ghazi, wow. Ben Espen. Look at that right. searing look insight at, from Marty in the Auckland office. Can, can, can um, I just say before we even start, look at you there and your swept back locks and the shirt unbuttoned to your navel. I'm looking at... Uh, no, hang on a minute. Other. I will now say to the listeners that is not true. I'm wearing a hoodie today, it's so Martin's so perpetrating misinformation. Please. Good God, he's the only man I've ever worked with who comes to work in a midriff top, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, it's, 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 stop it. You're talking about drag queens. Look at the way you dress, mate. Anyway, I'm looking at Listen. Lachlan had a haircut last night. And Lachlan has a oh, mullet for the first slick? time in his life. And this is what I want oh, you to do is... as well. And I want I want dear Do, leader to, I to, to introduce it. Yes. Kelly, please tell him to get a mullet. I've got conflicting Ruby, you're gonna get on a the mullet. mullet. Kelly, you're gonna consensus. get a mullet. You're all gonna get mullet. Come on. Yeah, I wouldn't mind getting a mullet actually. It's a cool look. It's a cool okay, look. But cool, look um, at, how can it possibly be cool? I used to have one as can, I had the worst Lachlan one in Wellington. Now, I, I had the dread mullet. That was even worse. A dirty, filthy Cuba Street dread oh, mullet. Can we have and photos, when I, please? When I got it cut off, I actually I actually did the surgical thing with it and incised into the dread lock and, and open eh, open it up and I can see Lockie on the that's not a mullet. That's not a mullet. It's short. It's not a mullet, mate. Look no, at that. A short mullet, mullet is just a normal out. haircut. I'm starting out. It's a normal oh, haircut. Starting it's starting out. out. Okay, Look at that. It's right. starting okay. out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. He's, All right. He, it's in the early stages. That's fair enough. Hey, are you going to um, Warriors tonight, mate? I'm not, no, but I've heard some commotion about it. I've heard some commotion about Hello, it. What do you it's, mean? You um, had the cricket test there on Tuesday. You didn't go to that. Now you're not going to the Warriors look, opening I, game. We've had a very How busy week on the platform man, with Sean's mate. show. Oh, come on. We've had a bit. Uh, yeah, well, actually, you, you texted me the other day, said you regret not going to that, and I think I already do. But I was outside. I, I was in the general area. I'm questioning your gender I status. Hear. I'm questioning what box you're ticking on the census because instead of going to what normal things that a man with a penis would go to, you're talking about drag queens and strip club entertainment. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's controversial issues, and we've had a big week on the platform. Right. I've been setting stuff up, okay. you know, uh, so mm -hmm. I've not had the the well, I've not had the time to go to the cricket anyway. Um, Marty, I did wanted to actually just uh, get your thoughts. Big win for Manchester United against Newcastle in the uh, the Carabao yeah, Cup. Yeah, look, it was. Um, uh, if we're talking about that for just a brief minute, I hate talking about just that a second. I know, yeah, I know, because nobody cares about Man United, don't they? But and I, also, I, I get really nervous talking about them. them. Yeah, I'm going to drink. I'm going to jinx them. Um, more, more that um, you know, when you play eight games in a month, any team that's playing ten and thirty two days in any professional sports league football, I'm talking about. I mean, that's a hell of an ask. And so he's rotating the squad. I'm going to I'm going to dovetail this into the Warriors, mate, because this is this is. Okay. Don't tell us into the Warriors. You, you, had, you had a Man United side and a Man United squad there. At the start of the season, I think most of us would say was looking light. A couple of new players came in. Casemiro came in. Lissandro came in. And are those two players going to make an enormous difference with a new coach? Well, you know, I'm a doubter like everyone else. We lost 4-0 away at Brentford in the second game. And you're thinking, oh, my God, here we go again. I mean, this coach will last six months. Well, in a period of the subsequent 20 games or so, Eric Ten Hag, the Dutchman, has completely turned this club around. He's turned it around attitude-wise. You know, he's, he's installed his own form of discipline. He got rid of the distraction that was Cristiano Ronaldo. And this team seems to have raised the bar itself because of him. So let's go to the Warriors then. You've got a guy called Andrew Webster's come in. We've met him a couple of times. We've been out to stand-ups uh, and what, you know, what us uh, in the media call the presses and stuff like that. And this guy is really impressive. He comes from an absolute winning culture. He, you know, he's, he's, he's been the attack coach for the Panthers. He's been in charge of the Panthers when Nathan, uh, Ivan Cleary hasn't been there. They're back-to-back -back NRL champions. So can he singularly make a difference? And I think for all Warriors fans that you've got to believe, all Warriors fans are just hopeless on the, on, you know, on the belief button. I mean, every year it's going to be our year and all of that kind of thing. The mere sheer facts of it are, let me just explain to you, in the last Explain four away. seasons, nine wins out of 24, eight wins out of 20 in the reduced season, eight wins out of 24. Last year, six wins out of 24, including only two in the last 16 games. So this team is coming from a position way the hell down here. Ben. And with no he's just real... Got, for those who can't see yeah. on the screen, what's he doing down there? He's, he's bent I'm over and he's carpet. rearranging... I'm on the, yeah, I'm on the carpet, okay? So that's where we're starting. We're so far be below the eight ball or so, or so far below the buying line in terms of the NRL. And so I don't know how many other fans, commentators, 
uh, expert opinionators are going to say, hey, the Warriors really have a chance, apart from those who, who, you know, just follow this team blindly. And that's what is so beautiful about Warriors fans is that, you know, win, lose, which is more often than not, they're still there. And apparently fifteen to 20,000 are going to turn up today at the Caketon or tonight at the Caketon for the opening round against a side that's not a great side. The Newcastle Knights aren't a great side, mate. So, you know, the Warriors should win this game. But that doesn't mean anything other than it's the first game of a intensely competitive competition. But, hey, you know, hope springs eternal. Yeah. And that's the Maybe greatest I'll thing about it. sport. He's me up. Yeah, well, look, you know, and, and, I, and I'll track back to Tuesday. You see, I'm, I'm connecting dots here. You go, you know, hope springs eternal. No one that was watching that cricket on Tuesday, on the previous day, on the Monday, is where wickets were collapsing and we were throwing the game away, it appeared, thought that New Zealand had a chance. England were chasing 257 or something like that. I mean, that's a team that you expect to belt that in a session and a half. And at 80 for five, all of a sudden the match the match turned and it was like, oh my God, we got a chance. And then, of course, they hit another 140 runs. I think we have no chance. And it comes down to the last couple of overs and, you know, was it a wide? I don't know. Should it have been a tie? doesn't really matter because the result's in the record books and, and suddenly win. That's the glorious thing about sport. It can take you to the places which you only yep. just dream and, of. And, 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 and once you get that result, nobody cares how you got there, do they? Really? That's it. And, once you get that equally, result. It can throw you in a hole. It is the worst relationship that you'll have in your life. Now, look, I'm staring at Ruby here on the camera, and I mean, you know, let's talk about relationships, shall we? And let's talk about oh, where's this going to go? Be ready with the, the love button, relationships that, that you have with people. Actually, yeah, should well, we get Ruby into the studio? The love she relationship you have well. with your team is as intense as any other relationship, and this is what women fail to understand. And this is why, when it comes to oh, sport, Marty, uh, Ruby, a Marty's lot of saying women that don't women fail to understand stuff. Yeah, they did. They, you, what the problem is with a lot of women is that you fail to understand that the true loves of our lives are things that you find so inconsequential, which is why you try and interrupt our sports watching all the time because you can't handle yeah, the actually, idea that we sit there, can look at a one. screen and go, oh my God, he should have got that. And you're sitting there going, hang on a second, I'm sitting here in lingerie. You should be going, I should have that. But in about, at the end of the, I'm saying, wait till the end of the game. That's what I'm saying. Just wait till the end of the game and leave us alone. Ben, am I telling the truth? <laughs> Look, I would agree, and but this is in specific to football, though, because Ruby was saying the other day when I was watching a game, um, this is boring, what do you watch this for? Oh, you guys. <laughs> this is boring. <laughs> and maybe it was because I shouldn't have been watching it while I'm at work. Maybe that was more of the, more of the issue. <laughs> but look, it was, you know, I consider it part of the job because now there I'm doing this bit of talk back and I have this to refer it's back to. So It's boring when nothing happens. But you... But we were, you were watching the happen. game the other day and there were no goals. It was pretty much over. There was no goals. It's just a bunch of, you know, attractive men. You know, that's the best part. That's and not running the best part. It, Well, it is for me yeah. anyway. It, it's just a bunch of men running around, doing nothing, and then everyone freaks out. And it's magic. It's magic. I mean, men are oh simple creatures, God. right? I understand, oh you know. God. You must get so yeah. excited with watching a whole bunch of guys just kick oh. a ball around. It's just, it's riveting. But as I explained to you, it's about the Hang on a second, I'm just trying to say... A whole lot of men running around doing nothing and it's really boring. <laughs> God, I hate the truth. I don't live in a world where truth exists. I love that. That's what I mean. You can't, you, can't, you can't define it like that, Ruby, because all of a sudden I'm looking at it going, what kind of a moron am I that I spent my whole life watching this stuff? Well, that's yeah, exactly how I around. feel. <laughs> yeah, Sitting there watching you all watch us. I mean, look, you're allowed to like, you know, whatever you like, but oh, are we? when you oh, spend are we? Do we have every... permission, do we, from... We have permission from a millennial. <laughs> yeah, we're allowed to like oh, what we like. Oh, oh, no, no. That's no. a victory. That's we've a victory, got, ladies we've and gentlemen. We've got permission. We've got we permission. Have permission. But, Ooh, like, come on, like adults. <laughs> if you've got a girlfriend or a partner, you know, you should spend time with your girlfriend slash partner. You didn't spend, you know, all your spare time watching sport or, you know, doing nothing. Like, you okay, know, explain spend some to time us then, connect. explain to us then, because, okay, there's a lot of men listening now who are going to go, right, I'm going to actually learn something about women in relationships. What do you want from us exactly? Okay, everyone wants... Well, this everyone is turning wants into a good one of those... Spin-off podcast about <laughs> relationships now. Everyone wants a good, you. healthy sex life. Everyone wants love. Everyone wants genuine and genuine affection, don't they? This is these are things we want because we we are creatures and we are creatures that procreate, and so therefore we are attracted to other creatures. All of that stuff. But what do you generally want from a relate or from a man? I mean, what do you expect of us? Because I believe that you demand okay. too much of us. Not just okay. you. I think your whole species. I, 
I mean, I think that's a bit of a generalisation, um, first off. But I think that, I mean, I'm just going to, again, generalise. I would say more, most women want attention, companionship, someone to share their life with, not someone to kind of just coexist with. They want something that's joint and, you know, unanimous and both people are invested. You know, right. they don't want to be one-sided. And sometimes it is, and that's totally normal. But I think that for the most part, women want mutual connection and mutual interest. It's a comprehensive okay, answer. How, how important, okay, let me go, okay, um, a couple of things here. So what we're looking at is, okay, the most important thing to you first and foremost is, is what? For, for me, in a relationship? Yeah, well, you, this is what you, you were generalising about women. Carol's sitting there as well. Okay. What is the most important thing to you? Is it trust? Is it love? Is it a tra physical attraction? Is it cash? What the hell is it? Marty's just doing research. <laughs> for me personally, um, just based off my own experience, it's definitely going to be trust. Um and just, you know, being uh, connected. I want someone to be invested in me, someone who genuinely cares. And it's not just about sex or, you know, just superficial things. I want someone that genuinely cares about me for me. And I feel like I can speak for a lot of women in, in that sense. See, that's lovely to hear, isn't it, Ben? I hope <laughs> that has an influence on you and the selfishness of your life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am going to realign my, uh, you know, chakras now after hearing that. Oh, um, God. I'm going to look, take a long look in the mirror. I can make you a herbal tea after this, Ben. We've got some new ones in yeah, the office. Yeah, I might have a lie down as well. Um, a herbal tea and a lie down. Um, brilliant. Right. Well, Martin and Ruby, thank you very much for joining me this morning. What do you two also think about, just before you go, I just want to, I also just want to, before you go, I just want to ask something else, because I know it's been a serious topic all week. Heather Duplessis Allen, who's an old mate, an old colleague mm. of mine, uh, and the fact that she got fined, or she didn't get fined, the BSA fined, and the company will pay all of this money. So you're a 16 year old. Uh, you, you know, there, there is a group of people in New Zealand who've decided that if you're 16, you should be allowed to vote, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. But if you're 16, uh, and you can come on the radio, you can make a decision to do an interview by yourself, and then you get asked questions, and you get flummoxed, and you can't answer those questions. Why the hell is well, it any? Mom, why the hell is it the responsibility of the person asking the questions to babysit you if that's the case? If you think look, that you're adult not, enough to take a day off school and organise a protest, well. it wasn't just a 16-year-old. I mean, this person was the selected spokesperson for, as go. I said earlier, a climate protest group that were actively trying to influence mm -hmm. political decisions and represents a 16-year-old who I would imagine was campaigning to be able to get the vote. If you don't know how the world works, and I'm sorry, that interview with her, to me, showed that she didn't. Yeah. Because no, Heather would ask it. her... She had you know, no argument. Um, she was, she was also unable not going to, to defend what... Suit. Yeah. The whole and, and, thing and was, was based on other... Go on. You lost an argument. It is as simple as that. You got made yeah. to look like a fool because simply that you didn't actually have the facts and figures or your own ducks and drakes in place. And, and, and that's just a case of being un, un, yeah, that you were just unprepared. Unorganised. And look, yeah. and also, the, you know, the thing with Heather the media, it's a rough and tumble Heather questions. Business. No, she wasn't. He Heather was asking really simple questions, you know, and I watched the, the video yesterday and I had a bit of a giggle. Um, it was hilarious. I'm after, sorry. I, think it was, I thought it was funny. Ben said to me, he goes, oh, it's so funny. You have to, you know, watch the whole thing. So I, I will listen to it. So I listened to it. And I burst out laughing with Heather at the same time. It was hilarious. Because you could tell she, it was a goes, natural reaction to... She goes, to uh, oh, I yeah. don't know, uh, a couple of months ago. So, you so know... She, uh, the, so <laughs> what? So hey, guess what happens, where, where, guess what happens in your life? Where did you go? You know, Thank sometimes you. in your life what happens is you say dumb things. Sometimes you do dumb things. I can put my hand up and say everyone. guilty, guilty, guilty. And sometimes you actually... Uh, get embarrassed because of the way you behave or what you've actually... It's called a life lesson and you absorb that and you learn from it. I just can't stand the idea that, what, you've actually decided to come on, made that decision, you mm. get found out and then it's the person's fault who found you out that... I mean, this is just absolute... I mean, it's just molly calling baby, baby stuff, isn't it? Well, well, anyway, let's this, get back Marty. to sport. Yeah, look, before we go, just tell us what you've got on the show this afternoon. Uh, what obviously, we'll be talking big time about the Warriors. We're going to go to Matt Walsh, who is the owner of the Breakers. The Breakers play tonight. I mean, look, if you want to stack and rack, you've got the Crusaders Highlanders kicking off at the same time as the Warriors. You've got the Breakers after that first game of five of the ANBL finals. And this is a team that's totally turned its itself around. It's it's a fantastic success story. You've got the Panthers uh, versus the Broncos after that. So you've got a big night. I've also got my son coming over from uni, so I'll cook him some dinner as well. And oh, Look, nice it's one. just... Friday night, man, uh, and, and if you can't, after everything that's happened in the country at the moment, I know there's a lot of people who are just not in a position to have the luxury of saying, yeah, I'm going to sit down and watch sport all night, but if you, if you are at the end of a working week, 
Yeah, put your feet up and just enjoy it. Uh, every now and again, we just got to take some time out and just enjoy, don't we? Just have a bit of a laugh with Absolutely your friends agree. and do something silly like that. I mean, for no other reason. I watch sport, mate, because it's escapism. Because I, I, it's the only way I can actually deal with real emotions. That's why I watch sport. Because otherwise, if yeah, I have to sit down and beer. actually talk, like, you know, like you want me to talk and actually express my feelings, Ruby, ah, I don't have any. Desensitise yourself then, that's all right. <laughs> anyway, look, the show has gotten away from me. Sorry, We've been, um, yeah. No, own your Martin, own show, mate. You're a talkback talk host. Be like Sean. I know, just tell that's people what I was just thinking. I was like, look, mate. this is on completely off the rails. And to be honest, I'm not mad about it because it's always a lot of fun and it's a Friday morning, isn't it? Everyone's having a bit of a laugh. Marty, uh, thanks for joining us. Be sure to and tune in. And my favourite person in the workplace is Sydney uh, producer show. who does all the work all bloody week and no one ever says much about it. Love you, Kel. Love you, Kelly. Love you, Kelly. I like you guys. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Marty. Okay. Have a good weekend, my friend. <laughs> yeah, see you later, Marty.